This is Ritesh Srinivasan and in this video, let's look at chat GPT. Uh, this is a conversational AI model from OpenAI. So let's try it out. They have a demo. You just need to sign up and you can try it out. So let's go to the demo. So I have already asked some questions over here, right? So something like, can you tell about yourself? So this, uh, it says that I'm an assistant, a large language model trained by OpenAI. And then I'm de uh, designed to assist, you know, for a variety of tasks, including answering questions, providing information, helping with writing and research. It says that I'm not a physical entity, but a computer program that uses advanced machine learning algorithms to process and generate natural language. Okay. Then I asked like, how were you trained? So it was saying that I was trained using a type of artificial intelligence called deep learning. And there is some details over here about what is deep learning. Uh, it allows me to process, understand natural language. Details are proprietary, so it's not a, uh, this thing. And it says that I'm constantly learning and improving. Then I asked like, how was reinforcement learning used to train you? I asked this specific question because over here, when I go to how it was trained, right? They say that this model was trained using reinforcement learning from human feedback. Okay. We'll come back to this, but let, I thought whether it will mention that it says that, no, I'm not trained using reinforcement learning. I am a large language model. Okay. Which uses a type of deep learning, uh, using a type of deep learning. It allows to process natural language, all those things. And I said that, okay, as per your blog, you are trained using this. Can you tell me more about this thing? So it says that I apologize if I gave incorrect information in a previous response. I am not a blog. I do not have the ability to publish or write blogs. I am a large language model. It kind of tells the same thing again. Okay. So then I asked like, explain me about large language model. So here it explains about large language model. Um, it says that uh, it is used to train and uh, process, understand natural language. It's an artificial intelligence. It involves training a neural network on large amounts of data. Okay, and it can generate text that is similar to human written text, large manual offer uses, uh, language translation, text generation, answering questions. It's called large because they are trained on very large data sets, typically consists of billions of words. So it tells it about large language. I said some more details. So then it goes to giving some advantages of large language models over here, right? Then it talks about what is the advantage of large language model over here. It is uh, trained on large data sets. Then it says that its ability to learn and improve over time as they're exposed to more data, more this thing. Okay. Then I ask, can you give an example of large language model? It gives GPT-3 as an example, and it tells what the abilities of GPT-3 over here. Right. And then I ask, like, how do I generate text using GPT-3? Right, because over here it says GPT is a uh, versatile, powerful language. You can generate text, all those things over here, right? So then it says that uh, to use GPT-3 API, it gives that entire procedure. You need to sign up for an account, obtain an API key. You will be then able to use the API to access GPT-3 and generate text. Okay. So you have to provide some initial prompt and you can do it. And it says that even if you are not a developer, you can go to the playground feature of uh, OpenAI. Okay. And you can try things over here. So quite an accurate result over here. Then I asked like any other examples of large language models. Then it goes to Bert, Robert, or Transformer Excel and explains a little bit about these models. Okay. Then I ask about which is better, Bert or Roberta, right? It says it is difficult to say which of these two language models is better overall. So both are highly effective. One key difference is the training data. Another difference is the way two models were trained. Okay. Uh, and then it says both are highly effective. So this is quite nice, nice answer. Then I say explain bird to a five year old. So it says that uh, you can say that it's a very clever computer program that is designed to understand and talk in human language, trained on a lot of books. Um, so it gives an explanation over here. It can also help people by writing text for them like stories. Then I say explain Roberta to five year old. It ex explains over here. And here it brings BERT over here in the context. See, it is trained on even more books other than written text than BERT. Then I say GPT-3, it brings into context BERT or Roberta. And it says that it can do better than these models. Okay. Then I ask like, what is, when is GPT-4 coming out? It says, I have no information. Okay. Then I ask like, what do you think of the criticism that large language models are stochastic parrots? 
So it says, I am a large language model. I do not have the ability to form opinions or engage in discussions about criticism of my kind. This is quite nice, a nice response. Okay, what I find is all the responses, it is quite grammatically correct. It is, it looks as if a human has written it, right? So the responses are good. It also has some kind of memory over here because as I am shifting focus, it still keeps the context, right? When I'm going to GPT-3, it brings in Bert Robert over here because I have talked about it, asked about it previously. Okay. So then if you go down, uh, I ask about uh, some facts, right? When did Ferrari release its first car? So it gives these details. Okay. Uh, this was the first sports car to be released by Ferrari. Maybe we can verify it. First uh, car from Ferrari. Right. Or first car from Ferrari. Uh, it is 1947 125 Sport. Um, so if you go over here, it says, yeah, 1947 125S. It says over here 1947 125 sport so it is actually pulled from wikipedia it could have been trained on wikipedia then i ask which is the latest car to be released from ferrari right release from ferrari it should have been released from ferrari so grammatic mistakes over here but still it is saying that i'm sorry but i'm not able to browse the web so i do not have access to current information so whatever information is being trained on it is able to pull from that and give an answer okay i apologize if i'm unable to provide an up-to-date answer so that is the thing. Then I ask like some questions like is COVID man-made? <laughs> okay, just for fun. So it says that, um, yeah, the origins of COVID-19 are subject to ongoing research. Some experts believe that the virus may have originated. Other experts believe that virus may be created or engineered. So it's quite nice over here. Then I ask which is the most effective COVID vaccine? So it says different vaccines have different, uh, this thing effectiveness varies on number of uh, factors. And uh, it talks about uh, the Pfizer um, BioNTech vaccine. And it has efficacy of 90, Moderna has 94, AstraZeneca has been shown to be effective, but efficiency varies. Overall, there are several COVID-19 vaccines available. So if I ask a follow-up question like, um, which COVID-19 vaccines are available in India? Let's see what uh, answer it gives, right? Ah, again, it's not able to browse the web, so it doesn't know much information about it. Okay, now maybe let's try out something else like uh, a Python program. Python program to perform, perform uh, say linear regression. Let's see what kind of result comes. I'm just shifting domains over here. Mm. Ah, so here is a simple program. Nice. Uh, yes, it is generating uh, this thing. NP dot dot yeah okay model dot fit yeah program first imports the necessary libraries including numpy mathematical operations called linear regression from this thing fitting a linear regression next the input output in this example uh, data is a four by two matrix output data is a vector of four numbers and that are calculated by multiplying the input data by a coefficient vector and adding a bias term. Okay. Next, the input and fed in this example, the input data is a uh, thing. Okay. Now, maybe uh, I will say modify the above code with a test train split of data. Let's see what it is able to, let's see whether if it is able to generate. Mm -hmm. uh, using a train test split of the data okay yeah see it pulls a uh, train test split np dot dot yeah size is equal to 0.25 model is equal to linear regression nice yeah it's able to generate this uh, program maybe i'll say modify the above code code and uh, create a SVM, create, uh, no, modify the above code and uh, perform, uh, to perform, wait, to perform, uh, let's say logistic regression. 
let's see if it has the memory and it's able to just modify that part of the code mm -hmm. okay using a train yeah it is doing that okay it is defining the output as well interesting cool it is generating the code okay modify the above code above code to make use of use of mm, decision tree also increase the number of features features to 10 let's see what it gives Mm -hmm. Yeah, addition tree classifier. See, it's changed this nice uh, 10 features. Yeah, it is generating the this thing. Hmm, I see some issues over here. It stopped over here with this. I don't know if there are any issues. Maybe I should say try again. Here is a more, you know, okay, addition tree with 10 features. It goes up to that point. Let's see what happens this time. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Yeah, this time it is doing a better job. So this can generate code. It has a lot of other functions also, which uh, it can do. So I'm quite impressed with the functionality of this particular uh, model uh, a little bit about what they used for training they say that they've used reinforcement learning from human feedback so we trained an initial model using supervised fine-tuning human AI trainers provide conversations in which they play both sides the user and an AI assistant we gave the trainers access to model written suggestions to help them compose their responses okay to create a reward model for reinforcement learning we need to collect comparison data which consists of two or more model responses ranked by quality. To collect this data, we took conversation from the AI trainers had with the chatbot. We randomly selected a model written message, sampled several alternative completions and had AI trainers rank them. Using this reward models, we can fine tune the model using proximal policy optimization and they performed several iterations of this process. So they have explained it over here. Prompt is sampled from our data set. A labeler demonstrates the desired output behavior. The data is used to fine tune GPT 3.5 with supervised learning. Step two, a prompt and several output models are sampled. A labeler ranks this from best to worst. This data is used to train the reward model. Okay. And in the third, this thing, optimize a policy against the reward model using the reinforcement algorithm. And based on that, uh, the reward is used to update the policy. Okay, so the is initialized from supervised policy, generates an output. The reward model calculates a reward for the output, reward used to, and they repeat these iterations. Okay, so this is how, uh, so it was using GPT 3.5. So here they have put some uh, limitations also. So there could be plausible sounding, but incorrect or nonsensical answers. Yes, um, yeah that is what they have said this is because of uh, you know fixing this issue is challenging because during reinforcement learning no source of truth training the model to be more cautious causes it to decline questions that it can answer correctly supervised training misleads the model because the ideal answer depends on what the model knows rather than what the human demonstrator knows okay it is sensitive to tweaks to the input phrasing or attempting the same prompt multiple times for example, given one phrasing of question, the model can claim to not know the answer, but given a slight rephrase, yes, it can answer correctly. It is excessively verbose. A lot of uh, yeah, long uh, these things are uh, answers are coming up. Okay, then this is because bias in the training. Trainers prefer longer answers. Yeah, so that bias comes into the model as well. It, the model would ask clarifying questions when the user provided an ambiguous query. Our current models usually guesses what the user intended. Yeah, so that clarifying nature has to come in. Yeah, so this is about uh, the iterate and they talk about the iterative de uh, deployment as well. Okay. Yeah, so you can sign up for OpenAI and you can play around with this model.
I'm quite impressed by this uh, chat GPT model. Um, kind of, it gives good answers over here. So this is was a short video on chat GPT. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting the link to this blog in the description of the video. See you in another video.